Hello, and welcome to worship with us electronically on this 13th Sunday after the Pentecost, August the 30th, 2020. As I announced a few weeks ago, we are on schedule to begin live streaming. And that is going to happen on our YouTube channel, which the name is pretty simple, Redeemer Lutheran Church Sun City Center. You can find that YouTube channel, please subscribe to it. It's gonna make it much, so much easier for you to watch the live stream service because I won't be doing these recordings anymore. I can't record on my phone and live stream. So please, if you have not done so already, please go to the YouTube channel, subscribe to it, and you should receive notifications that we're going to go live on September 6th, 2020 at 10 a.m. If you're not sure how to subscribe to the YouTube channel, please contact the office and we'll try to walk you through it uh, over the phone. And if you have someone that you know that you trust to come to your house during this time of staying safer at home, please call them and have them come over and show you how it's done. We are not open for in-person worship even though we go live stream. I wanna make that perfectly clear. For that interim that we will be live streaming, although not yet open for in-person worship, this is going to be the safest way for you to do worship live while staying safer at home. Um, we who are the worship leaders will follow guidelines while we're here. We're going to follow the guidelines that are laid out by the scientific community, by the medical experts, and we will make sure that there is less than 10 people here in the sanctuary on Sunday morning. We will be wearing our masks when we are not speaking like I am now or not singing like you see some of the folks singing. And we will make sure that we stay six feet distance at least from each other. So even though we are live streaming, we're not yet open for public worship and in-person worship. On a sad note, um, I've learned this week that our good friend and our faithful worker in the sound booth, Bill Atkins, has tendered his retirement. And uh, we, we honor that, we appreciate Bill. Uh, he has blessed Redeemer in so many ways and in so many different leader leadership positions even while he continued to operate the sound booth over the past 12 years i cannot express enough appreciation for bill and also for Kay, who often sits back there with him and i personally think she's the one that's telling bill what to do and when to do it but that's another story uh, bill is uh, maybe the, the one thing that we can hold against Bill, or you can hold against Bill, is that he is one of the people that's responsible for me coming here to interview and be your pastor. He and uh, Harold uh, came together to me, Harold Fisher, and, and asked me personally if I would consider interviewing here. So uh, Bill says in 12 years of being here, that's his one mistake. No, he didn't actually say that. I, I just made that up. Well, at least he didn't say it in my hearing. Let's put it that way. But we thank Bill for the years of service he has given to this congregation in the sound booth and hopefully will continue to give uh, some years of service in other areas. So let us worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, whose steadfast love is everlasting, whose faithfulness endures from generation to generation. Amen. Beloved of God, by the radical abundance of divine mercy, we have peace with God through Christ Jesus, through whom we have obtained grace upon grace. Our sins are forgiven. Let us live now in hope, for hope does not disappoint, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. O oh God, we thank you for your Son, who chose the path of suffering for the sake of the world. Humble us by his example. 
point us to the path of obedience, and give us strength to follow your commands. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today comes from the Old Testament prophet Jeremiah, 15th chapter, verses 15 through 21. Jeremiah's delight in the word of the Lord is contradicted by the heaviness of God's hand upon him and God's seeming unfaithfulness. God's tough love to Jeremiah says that if he repents, he will be allowed to continue in his strenuous ministry. Jeremiah is strengthened by the simple words, I am with you. O Lord, you know, remember me and visit me and bring down, rep bring down retribution for me on my persecutors. In your forbearance, do not take me away. Know that on your account, I suffer insult. Your words were found and I ate them and your words became to me a joy and a delight of my heart. For I am called by your name, O Lord, God of hosts. I did not sit in the company of merrymakers, nor did I rejoice under the weight of your hand. I sat alone, for you had filled me with indignation. Why is my pain unceasing, my wounds incurable, refusing to be healed? Truly you are to me like a deceitful brook, like waters that fail. Therefore, thus says the Lord, if you turn back, I will take you back, and you shall stand before me. If you utter what is precious and not what is worthless, you shall serve my mouth. It is they who will turn to you, not you who will turn to them. And I will make you to this people a fortified wall of bronze. They will fight against you, but they shall never prevail over you. For I am with you to save you and deliver you, says the Lord. I will deliver you out of the hand of the wicked and redeem you from the grasp of the ruthless. Here ends the first reading. The psalm for today is Psalm number one, or Psalm 26, verses 1 through 8. And if you have that in front of you, you may follow along and you may respond with the even numbered verses. Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted in the Lord and have not faltered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. Examine my heart and mind. For your steadfast love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless, nor do I consort with the deceitful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord, that I may go in procession around your altar. Sing aloud a song of thanksgiving and recounting all your wonderful deeds. Lord, I love the house in which you dwell and the place where your glory abides. Here ends the psalm. Our second reading comes from Paul's letter to the Romans in the 12th chapter, verses 9 through 21. Paul presents benchmarks for faithful relationships with Christians and non-Christians. Love is the unflagging standard for our behavior. When we encounter evil, we do not resort to its tactics, but seek to overcome it with good. While Christians cannot control the actions and attitudes of others, we seek to live at peace with all people. Paul writes, Let love be genuine. Hate what is evil. Hold fast to what is good. Love one another with mutual affection. Outdo one another in showing honor. Do not lag in zeal. Be ardent in serve spirit. Serve the Lord. Rejoice in hope. Be patient in suffering. Persevere in prayer. Contribute to the needs of the saints. Extend hospitality to strangers. 
Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse them. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Weep with those who weep. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Do not claim to be wiser than you are. Do not repay evil for evil, but take thought for what is noble in the sight of all. If it is possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave room for the wrath of God. For it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. No, if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them something to drink. For by doing this, you will heap burning coals on their head. Do not overcome, do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 